Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. This is lecture number two. The name of the paper is Literary Criticism One. The topic is Plato's four objections on poets and poetry, as described in chapter number ten of the Republic. This lecture is specifically for the students of BS fifth semester GDC Pabi, and also for the students of those colleges. Which are affiliated with Abdul Wali Khan University. This lecture will also cover whatever there is in uh, the Republic chapter number ten. So all these four objections actually are there in chapter number ten. So as a result, chapter number ten automatically will be covered in this lecture. In lecture number one, if you remember. We uh, have uh, already discussed uh, what is meant by criticism, and the conclusion which we made then was that criticism actually means evaluation here. So there, there are though there are other meanings as well, but evaluation a or estimating the value of art, uh, which will include the good qualities as well as the bad qualities. This is what we mean by criticism. Then in that lecture we talked about uh, the Republic and its structure. That it has uh, ten books, and uh, these books describe different ideas important for an ideal state. And then um, for us, chapter number ten is the most important one, in which we learn about the imitative art, or about poetry, and mainly uh, Plato. Has his own objections on poetry and uh, poets, which are described in Book Ten in the form of dialogues. Uh, Socrates is actually the mouthpiece of uh, Plato, and uh, it is through Plato that we come to know about the uh, four uh, four objections raised by Plato. Then, uh, in the previous lecture, we discussed the tripartite soul and we said that reason is the best part of the soul and appetite <coughs> desires emotions uh, these are the worst parts of the soul the intermediate part is the spirit based on uh, uh, these three parts of the soul is also the construction of the society and the state uh, as uh, was the best part um of soul uh, uh, reason the best part of the society are uh, those people the class which is the best one is referred to as guardians uh, they also uh, are called philosopher kings they are the best of the people uh, because they know the forms they can grasp the meaning of the forms the uh, Worst of them is the producers, and uh, these producers, which uh, consists of all the professions, for example, the doctors, the lawyers, the artists, the actors, the judges, and so on, and these uh, people are to be controlled by uh, philosopher kings with the help of the auxiliaries, the soldiers, the warriors, and this construction is. Similar to the construction of a human soul. So we discussed this. We also talked about Elenchus, which is the special method used by Socrates in the form of dialogues, question answers, and then we uh, learnt about the form that this uh, is also referred to as idea. And uh, for uh, Plato, idea is real, form is real. And we and all the things of the world, they are actually the uh, shadows of the reflection of these forms and ideas, and therefore they are removed from reality. Form is something which is common in all. It is not individual. For example, if you have the idea of a chair, then that idea means something which is common in all chairs. So it is not. Any individual share. We also said that the form of the good is uh, the best of all forms. 
um, we may call it uh, God, but it isn't call it God because they don't believe in one God, and uh, therefore they call it the form of the God. After this, uh, <coughs> we discussed the intelligible realm uh, in which uh, forms and ideas exist, and uh, we also talked about metaphysics that uh, it discusses and especially Plato discusses in metaphysics. Meta means away, physics means this real world, as the world of the forms is away from this world. It is, called, it is included in metaphysics, and in metaphysics, the theory of forms and ideas is included. Uh, also, the theory of tripartite soul is included in it. So, this is what we have in metaphysics. We will also have a touch with the uh, moral principle or the ethical principles, which means that uh, uh, it deals with morality or uh, something good or bad. So the discussion of good and bad comes under the discussion of moral discussion or ethical discussion. After this, uh, my intention in the beginning was to read this for you, but uh, Whatever is here will actually now be covered in this lecture. So I may not read this now. For the time being, I'll read this. I'll leave this part out, and we will uh, jump to uh, these four objections, uh, which are actually in um, this uh, book number ten of the Republic, uh, Plato's criticism of poets and poetry. You can also say Plato's objections on poets and poetry and uh, we can also say his four arguments again against poets and poetry. Uh, a little uh, introduction to Plato is also important as I've been telling you over and over again that Plato was uh, Socrates uh, student. He, Socrates was also their family friend and he was a kind of student very impressed with Socrates, Plato, and uh, in this uh, <coughs> introduction about Plato, we need just uh, two or three things to remember. The first of these is that Plato was an idealist, and by idealist we mean that he believed that idea or form is real, and that this world is not real because it is the photocopy or the reflection of this form and uh, we cannot perceive form with the help of senses but it can be perceived with the help of reason which is the best part of the soul um, with that we can perceive this otherwise we cannot see uh, forms so therefore, Plato is referred to as idealist. Contrasted with this is his student Aristotle. He is referred to as realist, contrasted with Plato's ideas and forms. So this is the first thing which uh, you should remember. The second thing is that uh, Plato was Socrates' student and that uh, Aristotle was uh, Plato's student and that Alexander the Great was um, Aristotle's student. So this is uh, uh, how we talk about these people. Um, this much introduction about Plato is enough. Um, we are not interested here in his life. We are interested here in chapter number 10, in which he raises four uh, objections against the poets and against poetry, including epic writing, dramatic uh, writing, as well and poetic writing. The next important thing is that we call uh, Plato as the poet among the philosophers. Now, this is very ironical to say that he is the poet among philosophers because he was against poets, against poetry then how can we call him a poet among the philosophers? This is so because uh, 
He tells us about his philosophy in poetic manner. Now you know that uh, he has written dialogues, more or less 26 dialogues, and even this chapter is in dialogue form. Um, and uh, in, uh, in these dialogues, um, he gives us uh, knowledge about uh, his ideas through the mouth of Socrates. Now, uh, these dialogues actually did not happen. So therefore, they were imaginary. They were the product of imagination. And whatever is the product of imagination uh, is not about what is or what has been, because what is, is uh, now and that you can see. What has been is history, and that can be read in history. But <coughs> this did not happen before, and we say that he is talking about what might be or what ought to be. What might be and what ought to be means poetic form, because for uh, this thing to say what ought to be, what might be, we need the use of imagination. So as these uh, things did not happen, the dialogues, as a result, we say that they are the product of imagination and therefore uh, they are poetic in form. Poetic in form because of this imagination and therefore we call him a poet among the philosophers because the other philosophers did not talk uh, in this way. He created a kind of drama and therefore we call it poetic expression. Um, but this is, as I said, very ironical that the same poet himself was the enemy of the poets and he was the one who condemned poetry and also condemned poets and said that these poets are harmful, their dramas, their epics, their poetry is harmful for the society and the people of the society. And though he confesses that the happiest moments of his life uh, had been spent with uh, the books of Homer. So he liked Homer himself. This is what uh, Socrates tells us. Of course, he is becoming, he becomes the mouthpiece of Plato. And uh, <clears throat> Homer is dismissed because he thinks he was the enemy of truth. And this is what we will discuss. Ye abhi tak jo maine baat ki, थोड़ा सा उर्दू में सुन लें आपकी तसल्ली तभी होती है जब उर्दू में आप सुन लें तो मैं उर्दू में सुना देता हूं प्लेटो के बारे में एक तो आप यह याद रखें कि इसको आइडियलिस्ट कहा जाता है जिसका मतलब यह है कि उसका यकीन यह था बिलीफ यह था कि आइडिया रियल है आइडिया से मुराद फॉर्म्स हैं जो इंटेलिजिबल रियल्म में रहते हैं और इंटेलिजिबल रेल्म को हम नहीं समझ सकते फाइव सेंसेस के जरिए लेकिन इंटेलेक्ट या रीजन के जरिए जो रूह का बेहतरीन हिस्सा है सोल का उसके जरिए हम इसको समझ सकते हैं अरेस्टोटल इसके बरक्स रियलिस्ट कहलाता है क्योंकि ये उसका ख्याल नहीं है और दूसरी अहम बात कि ये फिलासफर्स के बीच में एक पोइट है प्लेटो लेकिन ये बात बड़ी अजीब है कि इसने पोइट्स को अपने आइडियल स्टेट से निकाल बाहर किया था इसको हम पोइट इसलिए कहते हैं कि इसने जो डायलॉग्स लिखे हैं तो ये डायलॉग्स हुए नहीं है ये इसकी इमेजिनेशन से इसने लिखे हैं और जब आप इमेजिनेशन से डायलॉग्स लिखते हैं तो वो ड्रामा बन जाता है और ड्रामा आर्ट की एक किस्म है जिसको हम ए फॉर्म ऑफ पोइट्री कह सकते हैं और ये जो बातें करता है वो इसके बारे में नहीं है जो मौजूदा जिंदगी है वट इज़ और वट हैज़ बिन नहीं है बट ये है इसके बारे में कि वट ऑट टू बी एंड माइट बी क्या होना चाहिए और क्या होना चाहिए जो है इसको हम बार बार पढ़ेंगे क्या होना चाहिए ये पोइट्री है ये ड्रामा भी है ये नावल में भी नावल भी आएगा और ये एपिक पोइट्री में भी आएगा तो ये उन चीज़ों का जिक्र करता है जो कभी हुई नहीं है ये इमेजिनेशन से इसने क्रिएट की है लेकिन हम देखते हैं कि ये एनिमीज ऑफ द पोइट्स है एनिमी ऑफ द पोइट्स है और इसने पोइट्री को भी कंडेम किया 
اور پوائٹس کو بھی کنڈیم کیا اور کہا کہ اگرچہ میری زندگی کے خوشکن سال گزرے ہیں ہیمر کی کتابوں کے ہومر کی کتابوں کے ساتھ اور وہ مجھے پسند تھا <coughs> لیکن ہومر چونکہ ٹروت کا انیمی تھا تو اس کو میں آئیڈیل سٹیٹ میں جگہ نہیں دوں گا ابھی تک ہم نے چار ابجیکشنز میں سے کوئی ابجیکشن صحیح معنوں میں شروع نہیں کیا ہم ایک جنرل انٹروڈکشن دے رہے ہیں اور اس نیکسٹ پیراگراف میں ہم یہ پڑھیں گے کہ پلیٹو ہمیں بتاتا ہے کہ جو پوئٹری ہے یہ نقل ہے یہ پوئٹری از ہی ٹیلز اس ہیئر ان دیز پیراگرافس دیٹ پوئٹری از دی امیٹیشن اٹ از دی کاپی آف دا ریئل دیٹ از آف دا فارم دا آف دی آئیڈیا اینڈ دس آئیڈیا وین اٹ از امیٹیٹیڈ تھنگز آر کریٹیڈ آف دس ورلڈ اینڈ دیر فور دا ورلڈ اینڈ آل دا تھنگز ان دا ورلڈ that is once removed from reality or from the forms or from the ideas but when these things are again imitated by the poet or by other artists then this imitation is the second imitation the second copy and therefore it is twice removed from reality all art whether it is dancing or painting or uh, poetry writing or whatever type of art is, uh, uh, Plato calls it mimesis, the Greek word for imitation, that these are the people who imitate things, and uh, poetry is an imperfect imitation, because it is the imitation of another imitation. The idea was imitated when God created this world, that idea was imitated, and the world and all whatever it uh, there is in this world is once removed from reality but when the poet the painter when he when the painter makes a painting for example let's say a flower which is once removed he photo copies it and it is then twice removed from reality something which removes from uh, from reality is actually becoming closer to lie So poets are liars because they, uh, the, whatever they say is twice removed from reality. And uh, he gives his four arguments <coughs> against poetry and poets. The first two arguments are metaphysical. The second, the third ar- argument is uh, ethical and moral. And the, f- the, the final one is inductive. And we will now discuss these uh, different types. Uh, for example, the first argument will be discussed here, uh, which is on the metaphysical grounds. We already said that metaphysical um, means, meta means away, physical means from these uh, objects of the world. Uh, the idea of forms and ideas that is away from this world So therefore, the idea of uh, forms and also the tripartite soul that is included in metaphysics. And as a result, he tells us that uh, this, this uh, uh, nature, this world, it is, the, it is a copy, imperfect copy of the form. And uh, it is once removed from reality. So therefore, it is not that good. But poets actually imitate this photocopy and uh, the photocopy of a photocopy is twice removed from reality and something which is removed once from reality becomes a lie and if it is twice removed from reality it will become of course a big lie. So poets and poetry, uh, it's a big lie, poets are liars and uh, There is no use of what they say uh, or what the painters make. For example, if a carpenter imitates a chair, the idea of chair, then you can at least sit in that chair. But you cannot sit in the chair made by a painter. So on the metaphysical grounds, he tells us that nature is the imperfect copy 
and uh, those uh, whom imitate this world and the objects of the world for example painter he imitates uh, let's say the chair made by a painter and uh, when it is imitated it becomes twice removed because it has already <coughs> removed from reality when it was created and when painter makes it it goes away twice uh, from the reality and therefore it is close to lie it is a lie a big lie the poet is like a painter because the poet paints with the help of words he uses words and creates pictures in words and uh, uh, this poet is actually a painter in words and he paints different things with the help of words uh, this is what he does and this uh, painting uh, this word picture is again away from reality twice removed there is yet another thing that all these things of the world they have purpose and they have their use we take advantages from them uh, but whatever is created by the poet or by the artist let's say sculptor um, that thing actually doesn't have any use as i said before you can uh, sit in the chair made by a carpenter but the chair made by <coughs> an artist that is the painter you cannot use it the same is the case with uh, the flower um, about which a poet talks when the poet talks about the flower that flower cannot be smelt and therefore doesn't have any use so um, things have a purpose and use but the poets and the other artist whatever they make do not have any use the next idea is in the same uh, first objection of plato against poets and poetry that uh, the things of this uh, this world in which we live they change with the passage of time and uh, those things which change with the passage of time cannot be real therefore the idea is real the form is real because they do not change they remain the same idea or form is something common in all it is not individual chair or individual bed or individual person it is actually the something which is common in all for example common in all chairs is that all chairs have four legs that people sit in them so it is not particular it is something which is abstract and which is universal in a sense <clears throat> the other things change very quickly we find a flower which is very fresh in the morning but it fades in the evening and its petals fall down with human beings the same is the case if you see a human being after many years you find him very changed so these things which change with the passage of time cannot be real then what is real and the answer is the idea according to plato the idea is real the form is real and uh, we cannot see the idea but we through reason can perceive the idea or the form and uh, this has already been discussed in lecture number 1 the other things come and go but the idea stays there and it is for all the time the idea of man the idea of horse the idea of a chair uh that is something which is common in many and uh, it is in individual so if uh, we talk about the idea of a horse we won't say it is black because once we say it is black it will become individual horse while the idea is not individual uh idea is the form is which is uh, common in all and it is actually the essence of all things and therefore extremely important and plato for plato that is the real thing so when things are created these things are once removed from reality or from form or from idea but when it is copied by the poet by the dramatist or by uh, the artist by a painter 
then it is twice removed from reality. Something which is removed from reality is a lie. Therefore, poets are liars and poetry is a lie. And uh, it's a lie because uh, it is twice removed from reality. So as it is <coughs> removed from form, from idea, which is a metaphysical idea, therefore you say that this objection is on metaphysical grounds. Urdu may be soon lay thodasa. Ye pehla etaraz hai Plato ka artists par or poets par, dramatist par. और इसकी बुनियाद मेटाफिजिकल है मेटाफिजिकल इसलिए कि आइडियाज और फॉर्म्स का जिक्र ये मेटाफिजिक्स में आता है मेटा का मतलब है दूर फिजिक्स का मतलब है ये आम चीजें दुनिया की तो ये आम चीजों से फॉर्म्स और आइडियाज दूर है तो हमें वो बताता है कि जो फॉर्म्स हैं वो रियल हैं जब नेचर पैदा हो गया तो ये उस फॉर्म्स की नकल थी ये कॉपी और पोइट्स जो हैं वो इसी कॉपी की नकल उतारते हैं तो लिहाजा इनकी ये फोटो कॉपी की कॉपी है और जब कॉपी की कॉपी है तो रियल से यानी फॉर्म से आइडिया से ट्वाइस रिमूव्ड है और इनका कोई इस्तेमाल भी नहीं है ट्वाइस रिमूव्ड है तो ये लाए हो जाएगा इनका इस्तेमाल नहीं है क्योंकि जो कुर्सी पेंटर बनाता है उसमें आप बैठ नहीं सकते जो जिस फ्लावर का शायर जिक्र करता है उसको आप सूंघ भी नहीं सकते तो इस वजह से ट्वाइस रिमूव फ्रॉम रियलिटी और जब रियल से डबल दूर होगा तो वो डबल झूठ होगा और दूसरा है कि इनकी चीजों का कोई पर्पस भी नहीं है उसका इस्तेमाल भी नहीं है और जो चीजें और ये चीजें चेंज होती हैं जो दुनिया की हैं लिहाजा जो चेंज होती हैं वो कब रियल हो सकती हैं <coughs> तो रियल फिर आइडिया है और फॉर्म है और आइडिया और फॉर्म वो है जो सब में कॉमन है ये किसी इंडिविजुअल का जिक्र नहीं है जो कैरेक्टरिस्टिक सब में कॉमन है वो आइडिया है ये हमारा पहला आर्गुमेंट था अभी कम टू दी सेकेंड आर्ग्यूमेंट एंड और द सेकेंड आर्ग्यूमेंट इज ऑन मॉरल ग्राउंड मॉरल मीन्स समथिंग विच डील्स विद गुड एंड बैड सो देर फॉर इट इज रेफर टू एज ऑन मॉरल ग्राउंड बिकॉज इज अ रेफरेंस टू गुड एंड बैड वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड दैट द सोल ह्यूमन सोल इज ट्राई पार्ट आइट एंड दैट द बेस्ट पार्ट इज द रीजन and the worst part is that uh, uh, those emotions and those desires which we have including emotions uh these are the worst part the middle part is the spirit and reason in a good man it is reason which should uh, have the upper hand and it should uh, control the whole body or the whole soul this uh, um tripartite soul can also be given other terms and terminologies for example the best part of the soul which we call reason which plato called reason in modern psychology it is called cognition cognition is the power of thinking is the power of reasoning the second part is which we called spirit uh in modern psychology is referred to as cognition and this is the will power and uh, we said that it is the intermediate uh, part of the soul uh it can be referred to as cognition the next part is the desires part the emotions part and that is in modern psychology called affection so <coughs> these terms are the same as reason spirit and desires the terms have just changed so desires or affection is the feeling aspect of man it is the emotional side of man the desires of man and therefore the worst part the second part is as i said the spirit part and then the affection part is the lowest one and uh, 
it is the worst of all the best of all is um, the part which we call reason cognition and uh, the spirit part is the part which we compared with the soldiers or with that part which helps reason in controlling the desires affections the desires also include um, emotions passions and the other desires especially the desire for money um, you can use these names if you want to if you do not want to use them you can use these same which we have discussed already discussed in uh, the second uh, uh, in the first lecture so the lowest part as i said is this is desire part of the soul and uh, in good man uh, we find that reason governs everything the emotions are and passions which uh, are evil according to plato and uh, they should be suppressed uh, in a good man they are uh, controlled by the reason with the help of the spirit as we have discussed so reason or rules a man and uh, uh, those people who are the creatures of emotions who are the creatures of uh, desires uh, are not good people and they are bad men therefore those people who actually excite your uh, worst part will be considered worst people so uh, plato is going to prove that the worst part of human being of human soul which is uh, emotions passions and desires these are excited uh, by the poets by the dramatists by the epic writers and these are not good and therefore poets are not doing a good job and they are doing a bad job as we have discussed in the first lecture based on the tripartite uh, soul is the idea of uh, the three uh, types of classes of the society the first one are the guardians philosopher kings the second spirit is compared with the auxiliary we called it auxiliary you may call them soldiers and the last part which we called producers um also include passions emotions and they include businessmen workers traders farmers artists um doctors and all these um the ideal state is the one just like the ideal soul ideal soul is ruled by reason but ideal state is ruled by the guardians or the philosopher kings and the producers are controlled by the auxiliaries so that is this basic idea of the ideal state also um based on the time you have in the paper you can uh, uh, give the summary of this or if there is much time then you can go on and saying it in detail so this uh, basic idea uh, you have already covered this a republic which is written by uh, plato as the ideal state must be ruled by the philosophers and um, <clears throat> poetry and the poets they appeal to the worst part of the soul that is the emotions and therefore morally their influence is not good because they feed and nourish the emotions and strengthen them while these should not be nourished they should be made weak stimulating this lord part in man is not good uh, we are doing the moral uh, defense and the moral attack on poets that they are morally harmful poetry is morally harmful poets are morally harmful they corrupt the society and therefore they do not have any place in the ideal state in the republic ये दूसरा आर्ग्यूमेंट था जो हमने पढ़ा और इसकी अहम नुकात ये थे कि जो पोइट्स हैं मॉरल ग्राउंड पे उसने अटैक किया मॉरल का मतलब गुड और बैड से मतलब तो पोइट्स जो है इनका अपील वर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द सोल को है 
<coughs> वर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द सोल डिजायर्स हैं और ये डिजायर्स uh, इंक्लूड करते हैं इमोशंस और पैशंस को भी ये वर्स्ट पार्ट कंट्रोल में होना चाहिए पोइट्स जब पोइट्री लिखते हैं तो वो आपकी इमोशंस को उबारते हैं और इमोशंस को उबारना उसके मुताबिक सही नहीं है लिहाजा पोइट्स सही नहीं है पोइट्री भी सही नहीं है और पर्सनालिटी के और रूह के तीन पार्ट्स जो हमने पढ़े थे एक कग्निशन है हमने कग्निशन को जो कि एक मॉडर्न टर्म है हमने उसको रीजन कहा था कनेशन टर्म को हमने स्पिरिट कहा था और अफेक्शन को हमने डिजायर्स कहा था और इसी बेस पे आइडियल स्टेट भी बनता है जिसमें फिर तीन किस्म की क्लासेस का जिक्र होता है तो पहली जो जबरदस्त क्लास अकॉर्डिंग टू प्लेटो वो गार्डियंस है या फिलासफर किंग्स है दूसरा हिस्सा जो स्पिरिट्स की तरह है और वो सोल्जर्स हैं उसको हमने एक्जिलियरी कहा था और तीसरा हिस्सा जो पैशंस और इमोशंस को भी इंक्लूड करता है वो प्रोड्यूसर्स हैं बिजनेसमैन हैं वर्कर्स हैं ट्रेडर्स हैं फार्मर्स हैं जितने भी प्रोफेशन हैं सारे हैं तो एक आइडियल स्टेट वो होगा जिसमें फिलासफर किंग कंट्रोल करेगा बाकी सब चीज़ों को और रूह में रीजन कंट्रोल करेगा चूंकि पोइट ये बदतरीन हिस्सा जो रूह का है उसको स्टिमुलेट करता है तो इस वजह से पोइट्री ठीक नहीं है और पोइट्स भी ठीक नहीं है इसको आइडियल स्टेट में रूल्ड बाय दी फिलासफर किंग्स जगह नहीं मिलनी चाहिए दी नेक्स्ट इज दर्ड आर्ग्यूमेंट और दर्ड ऑब्जेक्शन ऑफ प्लेटो दिस अगेन इज ऑन मॉरल ग्राउंड द फर्स्ट ऑब्जेक्शन वॉज ऑन मेटाफिजिकल ग्राउंड द सेकेंड वॉज ऑन मॉरल ग्राउंड विच रेफर्स टू गुड एंड बैड द थर्ड इज अगेन ऑन मॉरल ग्राउंड एंड दिस अगेन रेफर्स टू गुड एंड बैड वन एवर वी वॉच ए ड्रामा और वन एवर वी रीड ए ड्रामा और पोइट्री we identify ourselves with those characters for example if you watch a movie you try to identify yourself with the hero and if a woman with the heroine and as a result your own identity is lost in uh, plato's time and before that uh, when dramas were written one character would play many parts uh, uh because uh, often the female parts were also played by the male characters and one character there were less characters so one character would perform different roles by wearing different masks so uh with the help of those masks they would try to give the semblance with the other person and uh, they will become another person as a result of this mask so uh, plato tells us that when you wear the mask of another person for example you are a very brave man and you wear the mask of a coward then your own identity is lost losing your own identity is something which is psychologically damaging audience also identify themselves with the people with the actors and actresses and actors also wear different masks and as a result as they play different roles they become another person and as a result their own personality is weakened so if you identify yourself with someone else your own identity is lost or is at least weakened and this is psychologically very harmful your personality will not be developed fully and it is not healthy for your 
personality and its development you will be for example impressed by the way someone talks the way someone dresses himself or herself and the manner in which he deals with the people when you are impressed with them something which is your own is lost and something which is not your own you take that and it uh, makes you a little artificial so you then follow the artificiality and as a result your own character is damaged it is lost uh, we also can give the example of a movie as i said you identify yourself with uh, the character with the main character with the hero uh, you are impressed with the dress he wears and you follow that and when you follow that this imitation is destructive for your personality the same is true of poetry the same is true of epic the same is true of drama and when your personality is destroyed this is something bad for the society this is something bad for the people and this is done by the poets by the dramatist and by the other imitative artists as a result this imitation poetry or drama or whatever it is art which is mimesis that is imitation is not good and as a result poetry is not good poets are not good they do not have any place in the ideal state in the republic this was the third argument the last argument is inductive inductive is uh, from logic it is that branch of logic in which you talk about the particulars and you prove a general rule with the help of the particular for example if i talk about uh, adil jamil he is particular if i talk about abdul wahab or furqan or mustafa or whatever these are particular people and if i say that uh, for example let me talk about myself uh, mohib will die this is particular adil jamil will die this is again particular furqan will die as these particulars will die we conclude and we give a general idea that all human beings will die because these are human beings so we uh, deduce a rule from going from general from particular to general the reverse is true of deductive process in deduction uh, we go from general to the particular in induction we go from the particular to general so in this uh, type of argument he talks about homer and he says homer is the best of all is the best teacher is the best poet and this best teacher and best poet has shown gods fighting with each other in his epic gods taking the sides and favoring one and disfavoring the other when such a person who is the best of the poets the best of the epic writer when he does so what can we think about the others because he is the best and he is showing gods fighting and he is showing gods taking sides he is showing gods becoming angry uh, and uh, involved in human affairs and this is done by the best poet if the best poet is like this what can we say about the ordinary poets because the ordinary poets will be worse than at least him the function of the poet in poetry is to give uh, instructions to give counsels according to plato it should give counsels and instead of giving counsels the best of the poets is showing gods fighting showing gods taking sides and favors and disfavors and showing gods becoming angry meddling with human affairs and as a result uh, they are not performing their he is not performing their function if the best of them is not performing their function what would be the teaching of the inferior poets therefore as the best of them is wrong 
the other inferior poets would definitely be wrong. Their poetry, therefore, would be morally unacceptable. So he feels sorry for the fact that he will now expel the poets from the Republic. But uh, this is something which he has to do in order to save people from the harms of the poets and from the harms of the poetry. They talk about something which is twice removed from reality. Let me repeat what we have done now. We discussed the four uh, arguments against poetry and against poets as described in chapter number 10 of uh, the Republic. So if uh, the question comes, what is in chapter number 10 of the Republic? So you will talk about these four arguments against poetry that in chapter number 10, uh, Plato raises four objections on poets and poetry. The first objection is on metaphysical grounds, which means that he tells us that this world is already a copy of the real, the copy of the form or the idea. The poets talk about this world and things in it, uh, which is already a copy, and they copy it once again, therefore it is twice removed from reality. Something which is removed, twice removed from reality is a lie. Poets are liars. They um, have bad effect on the society and the liars do not have any place in his republic. The other thing is that this they do not have the things of the poetry, do not have any use. And yet another thing is that the people, the things of the world change with the passage of time and something which changes can be taken as something real or form. The second argument is on moral grounds that poets appeal to the worst part of the soul, that is the emotions, the desires, and therefore um, they are not good for the society and for the people. Um, their emotions are aroused, which are the worst part of their soul, and it has bad effect on them. So therefore, poets are not good people, and poetry is also not good, and they do not have any place in the Republic. The third argument again is on moral grounds, because in uh, when we watch a drama, we identify ourselves with the characters. As a result, our own personality is lost. And uh, the poet, the dramatist or the actors of the drama then used to wear different masks and play many roles. And as a result, becoming another personality, when you try to become another personality, your own psychology and personality is destroyed. So this is again not a good influence on the society. The fourth argument or objection is inductive. He talks about Homer, that Homer is at the top of all the poets. But even he is not good because he has shown uh, gods fighting with each other, gods uh, taking sides, favoring one and disfavoring another. And therefore, if uh, someone who is at the top is like this, then the lesser poets, of course, will not be good. And therefore, they do not have any place in the society. So the, this was all about the four objections which uh, you find in this area, which we have already left. So for the time being, I'm not doing this part uh, because uh, the main thing is uh, these four objections. So I, for the time being, leave it to you to read it for yourself or even if you don't read it, it doesn't matter much. If we had time later on, we can read it uh, again. Uh, we are done now with Plato. Our next target after Plato would be uh, Aristotle. And uh, we uh, will discuss Aristotle's replies to these objections. Aristotle was a student, but he was the type of student who was realist, contrasted uh, with the uh, idealist. So he answers, he gives answers, not directly, of course, he was his teacher. He had a great regard, respect for him. 
Uh, but these answers are not directly given. We our next lecture, lecture number three, will be about these uh, answers. So thank you and uh, good luck.